Let the church praise the Lord. So good for us to be in the house of the Lord today to be able to share in this wonderful threefold celebration experience. Celebration of our country's 36th anniversary of independence. The ongoing celebration of our church's 100th anniversary of presence, ministry and witness in this Bahama land. And indeed this special honor to the seniors of our church. And so on this special occasion, as we have gathered in worship in this centennial celebration service of praise and thanksgiving to the almighty God, in honor of the senior members of this church, I should like to firstly commend the senior pastor and his pastoral team and organizing committee for the inspiration, the vision, and for the wherewithal to make this event today a wonderful reality. <clears throat> Secondly, I should like to sincerely congratulate all of the elder statesmen and women of this church. You are precious honorees who are looking so good today. And you give us inspiration and hope that when we reach age 70, we could look as good as you look today. So we congratulate you, our honorees, who on this special weekend have been deservedly fed, fated, pampered, and are now being honored and awarded for your longevity of life and for your faithfulness in the work and service of the Lord. Honorees, you are special to your family members. You are special to me. And to all of us who are in leadership and in laity in this wonderful movement we call the Church of God of Prophecy. Your collective presence today represents over 6,300 years of life and more than 3,500 years of work, ministry, and service to the people of this body and beyond. You have given much. You have sacrificed much. You have endured much. And yes, in turn, you have been blessed much of the Lord. And the blessing of the Lord, the Bible says, it make it rich. And he added, no sorrow with it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. God is good to you, senior citizens. Blessed is the man, the woman that trusted in him. Oh, that man would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Seniors, can you praise the Lord together? Many of you honorees have been a tremendous blessing and an inspiration to me personally over the many years. For that, I am truly appreciative, grateful, and thankful. And so today we've come to say how much we esteem, love, and appreciate you in the service of the Lord and to again say thank you thank you God bless you and continue to love and serve the Lord with gladness I draw your attention now to two brief verses of scripture the first found in Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 4 and the second in Psalm 24 and verse 1. One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. I share with you today from the word of the Lord on the topic, building on the foundation 
of God's word. Father, we praise your name. We honor you, the giver of life and all that pertains to godliness. We thank you, dear God, for your hand upon the lives of our seniors whom you brought this far by your grace and through their faith. I pray now, God, that you will touch me. Speak to me. Speak through me. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Put your hands together and give God praise. Without a doubt, it was the Holy Spirit of God who brought together and placed into our focus this afternoon these two scriptural declarations by Father and Son. Father David realized that indeed the earth belongs to God, as well as all who dwell therein. Son Solomon takes the thought further, recognizing that his father David passed away, and soon he too will die and depart. But the sovereign God and his will continues. Yes, it was God's will to create the earth, his will to flood it, and his will to reserve it for the fiery judgment to come, according to the words of the apostle Peter. But Solomon, knowing that the will of God includes history, references his place in that history by declaring one generation passes away and another generation comes. Now the key for Solomon was to understand and complete God's will in history for him. Thank God for David and David's history. But Solomon's key was to understand and complete God's will in history for Solomon. No, it was not to perpetuate Solomon, his thoughts, his ideologies, his philosophies, his ideas. But Solomon was to fulfill that part of God's plan for the era in which he lived. It was to show forth God. It was to manifest God's wisdom, God's beauty, and God's glory to a world that was already God's. In this special season of celebration, when much emphasis is being placed on history, heritage, and legacy, it is important that each believer fulfills that part of God's plan and purpose for this era in which we live. The truth is, it's not about us. It's all about God. And so our gifts and our talents and our abilities are not given to elevate and to promote ourselves. They are given to present, to promote, and to lift up the name of Jesus in this, our present time. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the embodiment of the ever-living Word of God. You see, we are not laborers without God. We are laborers together with God. And so if the spiritual work that we do is to become impacting and effective, it is imperative then that we build on the foundation of the Word of God so that we may lift Jesus higher and higher and higher. 
Hallelujah. He still says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. For you see, it is in him that we repose our trust and are made safe and secure. Do I have a witness in the house? Again, Father David and son Solomon declared some trust in chariots. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the strength, in the safety, in the confidence of, of chariots and some in horses in their stamina. But we, the people of God, we will remember the name of the Lord, our God, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run it into it. And it's safe. In this time of celebrating a century of presence, ministry, and Pentecostal witness in these islands of our archipelago, it is important then that we reflect, study, and examine much more than man, but the God of man. For man, as dust, comes and he goes. But... Hallelujah. But our God abides forever. And so to comprehend God's plan and then see how men attempted to build to fulfill his will in their era is wisdom. And in doing so, one can practice the positive and one can avoid the negative. Amen? Amen. You see, people of God, there are positives to expand and there are negatives to evade in the history of every man save one, the man, Christ Jesus, the son of the living God. Amen? As great as Moses was, there were positives, but there were also negatives. Samson, positives and negatives. Joshua, positives and negatives. Noah, positives and negatives. But thank be to God, Jesus, the Son of the living God. There's no negative in him. No negativity in him. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Help me, Lord. So Paul wrote, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold and silver and Precious stone and wood and hay and stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Amen. And so, because the day shall declare it and the fire shall try and reveal it, the people of God need to be careful what materials we use in our building process. Amen? I truly believe that is why we are here today. We are not here to build with nostalgia. We are not here to build with custom. We are not here to build with traditions, nor with the faithfulness of men in their obedience to the plan of God, as good as that is. We are here to recognize and to appreciate God who breathed into, who brought back into existence, and who blessed this movement from way back then so as to bring us to where we are today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here to build upon the foundation of the word of God. Hallelujah. This is the Lord's doing, people of God. This is all about God. Hallelujah. In him we live, in him we move, in, in him we have our existence. It's all about him. If he removes his breath from us, we would become as dust. Hallelujah. We would become dormant and inanimate. But thanks be to God. Hallelujah. It was him who breathed into us, our forefathers, and brought back this movement that sunk into the dark ages. It was God who revived it, who restored it, who renewed it, and caused it to come alive. Hallelujah. In these 100 years in this country, give God praise. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. This is the day which the Lord hath made. 
let us rejoice I say let us rejoice this is celebration time let us rejoice and be glad in it hallelujah yes generations have passed but the earth is still the Lord's it would do us good to really get that to get that spiritual truth Apparently it's evading a lot of us but the earth is still the Lord's for the purpose of order and God is a God of order. He allows us to occupy. He allows us to do some things and pass some property title deeds and some conveyances and different things like that just to make us feel good. To say we have a little piece of the rock. But the earth is still the Lord's. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Men have come and men have gone. But the eternal God who is our refuge, he still has a plan for his people. I say to the church of God, God still has a plan for his people. And that plan is contained in the word of God. And it is upon that firm and strong foundation that we must endeavor to build acceptance of God's will, regardless to whether we like it or not. Oh, you didn't hear me. Hallelujah. We must endeavor to build lives to build character, to build the brotherhood of man, to build discipline, to build respect, to build order, to build health, healing, wellness, and wholeness, to build marriages, to build families, to build relationships, to build trust, hope, and to build an eternal future with God. God still has a plan for his people. Oh, glory be to God. For I know the thoughts. The Lord speaks through Jeremiah. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of peace in a troubled world, in a wicked world, in a critical world. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you, the people of God, an expected end. A glorious future, a victorious future, for I have not seen, nor ever heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. God still has a plan. Give him praise if you believe it. Yes, God still has a plan. We today, both young and old, juniors and seniors, and even intermediates, we are called to know God's plan in wisdom and to build on it that our work may endure the storms of this life. How many of you know that this life has many storms. Oh God, help us. Building on secular education, building on the foundation of family history, building on the foundation of heritage, building on the foundation of past experiences, building on the foundation of connections and hookups will all fail in the day of storm and fiery adversity. Oh, you didn't hear me. My friends, only what is built on the foundation of God's word will last. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but the word of God shall stand forever. Jesus teaches whosoever hears these sayings of mine. Hallelujah. We're talking about the foundation of the word of God. Whosoever hears these Rima word sayings of mine and doing them I will liken him as unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock oh, glory be to God and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house oh 
glory be to God. I believe it shook the house. It swayed the house. But the house fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. Hallelujah. Thank God for the foundation of the word of God. Thank God for the solid foundation. Thank God for a firm and strong salvation and foundation in Jesus Christ. Jesus told Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's why we are here celebrating 100 years. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ever since the days of John the Baptist. Hallelujah. The kingdom of, oh help my Holy Ghost. Help me somebody. It suffered violence. And the violent taking it by force. Ha ha ha. Oh but thanks be to God. The violent will always come. There will always be violence. But God is our refuge. God is our rock. God is our deliverer. God is our mighty fortress. God is our strong power. And upon this rock, a revelation of understanding, I will build my church and the gates of hell. That's why you were here today. The devil wanted to take you out a long time ago. The devil wanted to take me out a long time ago. But thank God you seniors can celebrate. Hallelujah. In your 70s. In your 80s. In your 90s. Hallelujah. And by the grace of God, some of you will make a hundred and more. I tell you, it's all about God. It's about the foundation of the word of God. Hallelujah. You laid your hopes on things eternal. You held on to God's unchanging hand. Hallelujah. And everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. Hallelujah. It fell in great surprise to the builder. It fell in great astonishment. It fell in great denial. It fell in great disappointment. God help us not to be disappointed. But if you build on the sure foundation of the word of God, you will never be disappointed. I say you cannot be disappointed. For I know whom I have believed. I don't know about you. But I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. God will come through for me because his word cannot fail. Some may scorn our style of Pentecostal worship. Some may call us jumpers and holy rollers. Some may call us religious fanatics. Some may call us holier than thou. Ha ha, but call us what you may. If you build right, and if you live right, heaven belongs to you. Because heaven is a holy place, filled with glory and with grace. No sin can enter there. Sin will stop you at the door. Sin will buy you out forevermore. No sin, no sin can enter there. Oh, glory be to God. Now we know we're in the church of God. When you're preaching like this, you know you're in the church of God. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure and having the seal, the Lord knowing them that are here. And then everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity but in a great house they are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor if a man would purge himself cleanse himself wash himself 
from that which is dishonorable. He shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. God will clean you up. Hallelujah. God's plan upon which we are to build still includes holiness. You need to nudge your neighbor and remind your neighbor that the plan still includes holiness. Times have changed. The world has changed. People have changed. What used to be black or white to many is now gray. But Jesus has not changed. The word of God has not changed. Holiness is still the hallmark of the plan of God for his people. The word of declares, the word of God declares, follow peace with all men. But do you know that following peace with all men by itself will not get you into heaven? And holiness. And holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. Hallelujah. And so we may not like some men. Amen. But we must follow peace with all men. Men of high degree. Men of low degree. Men of grace. Men of ungodliness. Men of vanity. Men of humility. Glory be to God. Follow peace with all men. And holiness. Without which no man shall see the Lord. To live holy in this sinful world of Real evil, perversion, vicissitudes, and vexation of soul and spirit is more than a talk. Living holy calls for sacrifice, self-denial, and for transformation from confirmation to the things of this world. Amen. You see, if the mind is carnal, the spirit man cannot live holy. That's right. The mind still make it the man. That is why Paul exhorts the Romans, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen? You can no longer go into the night, night clubs and the dance hall and the gambling den. Uh -huh. you, you can no longer go into the bar room and and drink your gin and your vodka and your whiskey, uh huh, and swear and curse and, and carry on bad and live loose lives and uh huh, and have your brother's wife, uh huh, and your sister's husband, and uh, you just can't do those things anymore, you see. Uh, I present you, brethren, uh, hallelujah, by the mercies of God, that uh, you may present your bodies uh, a living sacrifice. Uh, you got to give up uh, the things of carnality, uh, give up uh, the things of the flesh, uh, give up uh, the things of the world. Uh, you're making a sacrifice, uh, uh, holy and acceptable unto God, uh, which is your reasonable service. Uh, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Uh, let there be a change, hallelujah, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Somebody say, Lord, change me. Yes, in the midst of an ever-changing world and people, holiness remains the unchanging standard of the house of God. Every child of God, the young, the middle-aged, and the elderly, is required to live a life of holiness in the sight of God and in the presence of men. Some can live holy in the sight of Christian man and in the sight of God in the house of God, but when the service is out, that's a challenge, that's another story. But we have to do it in the sight of God and in the presence of men. There is no graduation from the life of holiness. David declared in Psalm 93, thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Lord, forever. The biological body is required to be holy. 
the spiritual body, the body of Christ is required to be holy and God supplies grace for both to be holy. I think we ought to praise the Lord right there. God supplies grace for both the biological and the spiritual body to be holy. So there is no excuse. God removed the excuse factor. Oh, glory be to God. Paul proclaimed to Titus for the grace of God that bringeth salvation had appeared to all men of all race, creed, and color, of all standings in life. Hallelujah. Teaching us that denying ungodliness all your holiness requires a sacrifice, giving up some things, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he may redeem us from all iniquity and present unto himself a peculiar, a glorious body, a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Yes, God still has a plan for his people. God still has a plan. But it will take an unction from the Holy One. It will take a revelation of what his plan started out to be. And then an expansion, allowing it to meet the needs of our era in history. God still has a plan. It is not enough to do just as our forefathers did. God bless them. God bless them. God bless them. They did well. And you honorees today, I believe, our second generation Pentecostals. Second generation, some may be third. So we thank God for the forefathers who instilled within you spiritual discipline and faith in the word of God. Mm -hmm. They did well. And yes, like them, we too must receive originally from the inspiration of God. But we must then continue to do as we are inspired so as to fulfill God's plan for us in our day and time. They fulfilled their purpose and their plan in their day and time. Just look at this magnificent edifice. Hallelujah. This represents vision, plan, and purpose. Thousands have come to know the Lord. Hundreds of thousands, I believe, over the years have been blessed by simply walking into this holy place. They fulfilled their time, but now it's your time. It's my time. Hallelujah. To fulfill God's purpose in this era in which I live. Hallelujah. There is a spirit in man, but the inspiration of the Almighty giving them understanding. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy path. Yes, we are directed by the word of God. Hallelujah. And that is the foundation upon we must, we must build. For the word of the Lord, it is a lamp unto my feet. And it's a light unto my path. But not only are we directed by the word, we are impacted by the word. We are changed by the word. For the word of God is quicker and it is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And it is a designer of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Hallelujah. The word will do its work. We must build on the foundation of the word. Somebody give God praise. God has a work for everyone in his vineyard. Amen. No work is laid off or made to retire or take a redundancy package deal because of age or ill health. 
every member of the body is a worker. And there is a work for every member of the body. Old age is a blessing in life. And old age is a blessing in the body of Christ. We need the voice and the wisdom of our seniors. We need the prayers, the counsel, and the support of our seniors. We need the encouragement and the love of our seniors. And we need the example, hallelujah, and the way to be shown by our seniors. You have a critical role to play in the body of Christ. Your physical strength may have diminished. You may not be able to go on the streets and in the corners and, and preach fire and brimstone like you did when you were in your 30s and 40s and 50s. But thanks be to God, he still has a place for you. He has a work for you. Hallelujah. And so we salute you today. We celebrate you today. We love you today. God bless you today, seniors. You are indeed blessed in this day, in this moment, in this hour, and you shall be blessed in time to come because the word of the Lord says so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. The word upon which you built your foundation, this word tells you you will be blessed even in time to come. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. They shall still, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, in the natural, when age comes upon you, the biological body begins to wither away. Ah, uh, you lose some weight here and there. Uh, some wrinkles appear. But in this spiritual uh, economy of which I speak, uh, hallelujah, when you build on the foundation of the word of God, the Bible says in your old age, you shall be fat and you shall be flourishing. Whatever you put your hands to do, it will be blessed of the Lord. You'll be blessed in the field, blessed in the body, blessed in your family, blessed in your ministry, blessed in your business, blessed in the community. Whatever you touch will be blessed. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be therefore steadfast, unmovable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know. Your labor. Your labor. Your labor. Is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. For the God whom we serve. He is not unrighteous. To forget. Your work. And labor of love. Sometimes our records don't reflect it properly. Hallelujah. Sometimes a young fella like me comes along, don't know what happened in the 50s, don't know what happened in the 60s, because the record is distorted. But God, but God is not unrighteous to forget your work, your labor of love, that you have shown toward his name, in that you have ministered to his saints and do minister. God bless you today. God keep you today. Continue to build on the foundation of the word of the living God. When the praise team join me in singing my reward, I'll wear a crown of glory. When, when I get home, I'll sing the wondrous story. When, when I get home, the Savior there will greet me. He'll be the first. Oh, glory. To meet me and by his side, right by his side, he'll seek me when I get home. Oh, but you got to be faithful. I say you have to be faithful. You got to be faithful unto death that you may receive a crown of life. I'll wear a crown of glory.
about the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for us. We pray that the Lord will be with us now. Guide and direct us. He's been such a gracious Savior, given us his word today. And so let's look to him now for blessings. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we bless and we honor your name today for your many blessings in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the time of worship. We thank you for the time of praise. Most of all, we thank you for the time of your word, washing our hearts, Lord, with your word. And we bless your name that you've blessed your man's servant to deliver to us that which you have given to him. We pray, dear God, that your name continue to be lifted up and exalted among your people. That our seniors whom we celebrate today through this service, Lord, would continue to hold to your unchanging hands, build their hopes on things eternal, and hold to your unchanging hand. I pray, Lord, that what they have built and what they have laid down will, remember, will remain steadfast and firm so that those who come after will find in you the same joy that they found. Let your will now be done in us. Consecrate us now to your service, Lord, by your power of grace divine. May our soul look up with a steadfast hope and our will be lost in thine. For we ask all these favors and blessings in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. God bless you. God keep you. And be blessed now as the boys' choirs sing to the honor and glory of God. <laughs> 